Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh man. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about Venom number 27 and number 28 by Donnie and Juan, um, who have been on the book. You know, Juan has popped in as fill-in artist on a couple things. I like his art style. He's pretty good. Um, and he's a really nice guy. I know we've had uh, interactions before on Twitter and stuff. Um, and I, I, at one point I was trying to get him on the show where we talked a little bit about maybe, possibly, but then I kept missing him and then I try to visit him at a convention. He wasn't at his booth at the time I went by. And so, you know, it's like things happen, you know, things things fall apart sometimes. Um, and also Donnie, we've, you know, Donnie mentioned he wanted to be on the show once and then I guess, you know, he's just a busy guy. So we haven't been able to, to knock that down either or pin that down. But, uh, but I do want to talk about this book. It's called Venom Beyond. It's part two and three. And I've seen, um, you know, some reactions to it, not a ton. I try to stay away from reviews about books on YouTube until I review them. So that way I'm not really influenced by other people's thoughts or, or nothing they say, you know, earworms into me and kind of persuades me to repeat it or regurgitate it in some way. I like to just try to give, you know, my initial thoughts of a a after reading the book. And so I've read each issue twice now just to kind of, you know, keep it fresh in my mind. Because I'll be honest with you, some of this stuff is a little forgettable to me. Um, you know, the Venom Beyond thing, I, I immediately when I heard the title, I thought of Batman Beyond. So funny enough, they go to a future, you know, timeline. Uh, so I'm like, that's kind of funny because, you know, Batman Beyond does is in a future timeline also. But this is a different dimension. And Eddie in this dimension is uh, with Dylan. And they were chased into this dimension by Virus, the, the mechanical dude in the like Iron Man slash uh, jury suit, whatever he has. And there's been a lot of speculation on who that character was. Um, I can't remember what my guesses were for, for you know, for who Virus was. I can't remember. I'm sure I was wrong, though, because they reveal his identity. So we're going to spoil 27 and 28 of Venom. So if you haven't read them yet, turn away now because we are going to talk about spoilers. Um, and go read the books yourselves, always, even when I don't like stuff or even if I do like stuff, I still encourage people to go, you know, buy it themselves, usually. Except for Savage Avengers Empire Number 1. I kind of told people not to buy that book. Um, but still do if you want to. Um, but uh, but yeah, normally I don't try to dis uh, discourage people from buying comics. I want comics to sell well. I want Venom comics to sell well. So ultimately, please make up your own mind about this stuff. And if you have different opinions than I do, let me know what they are down below so we can talk down there about it. Um, so for this, you know, for Venom Beyond, I wasn't sure who Virus was. But man, did I nail it on who Codex was. Um, Codex is this villain who's got long white hair. And he's got like this, he kind of looks like um, Soul Reaver a little bit, uh, you know, Kane from Soul, or not Kane, uh, uh, Raziel from Soul Re Reaver. Uh, also looks a little bit like the Darkness. Like it, it just totally looks like a character that would be in Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's heads. Uh, <laughs> so so when I was like, cause it's like all these 90 influences on, on their characters, I noticed uh, like Null and now Codex um, and Virus and stuff. So when I'm reading this book, Eddie and Dylan got sucked into another dimension. We had the maker, he created a, a portal. It was gonna bring him back into the ultimate dimension, which is a little weird because I think that world actually was evaporated, but whatever, continuity, right? Who cares, <laughs> apparently. Um, but so he went into the ultimate universe and Dylan and Virus and Eddie went into this alternate future reality. And in that reality, they come across a team of Avengers that all have symbiotes on them. So again, nothing original. Um, you know, like we talk about that all the time. Every time there's writers on Venom, they typically do the, okay, the symbiote has to have a baby, like one, a symbiote, whether it's Carnage, Venom, Toxin, whatever, like someone has to have a, 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 a you know, an offspring. Um, so that's one story that's always told in Venom books. Um, another story that's always told is like an invasion story. Um, which is that's kind of what you know Donnie's doing. He's building up to a big invasion story, and then the third story is always everybody else has a symbiote. So we did that in Venomverse with Cullen Bunn and stuff. We've done that with Planet of the Symbiotes. That was an invasion uh, story, but also uh, you know some people got symbiotes. They did the Spider-Man uh, Shadow uh, game or whatever Web of Shadows where everybody had a symbiote. So it, it, and then obviously Max on Venom the cartoon has that in an episode. So this seems to be tropes that just constantly pop up in these Venom books. And that's why I'm kind of like, ah, I, I, 
I, you know, I know there's only like seven stories in the world and you just keep retelling them, but can we get seven different Venom stories? I feel like we just get the same three all the time. Uh, you know, sometimes we get an emotional one. So I'll put that in as number four, I guess, but we need a, we need three more, uh, good ones. Um, but also I think what Venom needs and what we all, a lot of us here kind of praised Mike Costa for doing was start, he was starting to build a, a, a good supporting cast for Eddie and a good rogues gallery. Like he was bringing in Craven for a couple scenes. He had the dinosaur people. Um, Lee Price kind of felt like a, you know, an enemy to Eddie, uh, like a new enemy. And he became you know, like a, in Venom Inc became a threat in that one. Um, but of course he did it by creating an army of symbiote people, <laughs> uh, henchmen. So, uh, but then they did, um, you know, the Scorpion, like he came back and Matt Gargan in uh, the Nativity storyline that ended Mike Costa's run before he did First Host, uh, which was his official fin finale to his run. Um, but he brought in like Alchemex, like, you know, as like supporting characters for Eddie and stuff. So they built this really good supporting cast for Eddie and they were building this uh, interesting rogues gallery, I thought, of people who just weren't symbiote villains. So that's why I'm also not a fan of the Donnie stuff because it just seems like one symbiote villain after the next. And it's just like, okay. So it's like, um, it's first, it was like Rex and the Grendel. And then it was, um, you know, learning that Dylan was alive and he could possibly be some kind of symbiote being. And then we had absolute carnage after that. And then we had Venom Island, which was Venom versus Carnage. And now we have Venom Beyond, where it's like a, a, a alternate future where everyone has symbiotes. And then next we're going to get King in Black, which is just an invasion story with a symbiote god and more symbiotes coming with them. Like he just turned all the symbiotes into Grendels, apparently, and they're all coming to Earth. So it's like, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where I just kind of like, all right, I guess I just got to accept it. Um, but I'm not really liking it still. So Venom Beyond is like, it took... It takes this, these tropes that just pop up all the time, and it really doesn't do anything that I feel is too interesting. I, I, I see, I've seen people, uh, like, just initial reactions uh, without watching any reviews, but, like, just seeing thoughts, like, that pop up on Google and stuff of, like, you know, articles, and they're just like, you know, Marvel just revealed two of Venom's newest villains or whatever, and you're just like, it's like, okay, it's, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> they're only, like, those characters are only two issues old so it's not like they're super huge villains to, to venom but that we did we learn who virus was so before i get there you know eddie's on this alternate planet he's in this alternate future codex runs the planet the avengers are all symbiote avengers they they are bonded uh, genetically to the symbiotes that codex gave them and so codex is their ruler and so eddie shows up and he's like trying to get dylan away from the avengers because they want to start some crap with eddie Eddie fights back, and then that's when Virus shows up to get Eddie, and he tells the Avengers, my fight's not with you, and they're like, yeah, but you're not a symbiote, and you have symbiote, um, you know, destroying technology on your, on your, um, you know, armor, so we got to take you down and bring you to our ruler codex, so they, all the Avengers turn and fight um, conveniently, <laughs> they all turn and fight, uh, you know, um, Virus, and Eddie and Dylan get away, which I thought was kind of silly, uh, there is a moment where Eddie, turns his arm into the blaster from Venom the End and like it so it, it makes like a, a double helix kind of shape and then he like shoots it and the suit is like I, I can't believe the powers we have in this dimension like we we all of a sudden have access to all these other abilities and I'm like again like Donnie when he does that it's always so kind of lazy like where how did he get that ability like that's from Venom the End which ties into like we did a review on it recently which ties into like a Tesseract connection and it also had eddie had like 200 codices inside of him at that point um or the symbiote did like it, it's way more complicated than just being in a different atmosphere and then of course he grows the wings again and flies and stuff and you're i'm just like oh whatever man like i guess like if you're not going to care about it then why should i care about it um so so anyway so eddie uses that and gets away and he ends up in the sewer and that's where he finds uh, an army of agent venoms so you have the regular symbiote avengers up top and then you have agent venoms in the sewer who are part of some kind of resistance against codex and they haven't been like uh taken over by codex yet and you find out um which is weird because there's an agent venom that walks up to him that looks just like flash thompson and so he's like oh my god flash is that you is that you thompson and the person goes wait flash thompson that was the president of the united states and again it's just like dumb dialogue like it's like it's it's just you know donnie going like well wouldn't it be cool if flash thompson was the president of the united states and and wouldn't it be cool if like you know i'll reveal who the other symbiotes are in a minute because i thought that was kind of lame too but uh but though this one i thought was cool this reveal was i thought was really neat 
the leader of this Agent Venom group, the symbiote melts away, and it's Anne Wayne, an alternate universe version of her. And so when he shows, hey, I'm Eddie, uh, she's like, she starts crying, and she goes, Eddie, how is this possible? And I was like, hey, that's really good. That's a really good moment. And Dylan's like, who's Anne? Who's Anne? And it's like, dude, that's your mom. But, you know, he can't say that yet. He hasn't opened up to Dylan about who his mom is. So I'm guessing that's why Donnie wrote this story was like, hey, I'm going to have Anne in this story, an alternate universe version of her, so that it can bring that con that closure to that conversation. Because that's the one last thread secret between Eddie and his son is who his mom is. Um, and so this is that opportunity. So I, I give Donnie... Kate's credit for that. I thought it was a good twist. I just wish the other four Agent Venoms that's with her just weren't there because like their reveals were just fanboy nonsense. Um, she explains, so let me ask you guys how you think this works in the timeline. And maybe they explained this in the comic. I did read it twice, but maybe I missed a line or it didn't register. So if that's the case, correct me and let me know in the comments down below if I get this wrong. But Anne says... Um, you know, like he, he said, he's like, how can you be here? Eddie's like, how can you be here, Anne? And she goes, well, you know, I have the symbiote. I got it in a church. And he goes, what do you mean? He's like, I was in a church. And, uh, and he's like, and I, I went in there and that's where Spider-Man released the suit and it fell on me. And that's how I became Venom. He goes, but I did go in that church to kill myself. And she said, uh, yes, I know. Because in this universe, you did kill yourself with a gun which uh, I don't remember Eddie having a gun, uh, to be honest with you, uh, but maybe that was the case in Venom the Hunger, because uh, I know Donny Kate's a fan of that run, even though he retconned it by saying Eddie doesn't have cancer. Um, but Eddie went to that church because he lost his job, he lost his, you know, a lot of things. He was losing Anne, and he also, you know, lost, um, he lost his health. He found out he had cancer, so he went to the church to kill himself. I don't remember him going into the church with a gun, but I could be misremembering that. So if I'm, I'm wrong about that, correct me. But obviously he went to that church to kill himself and the suit came from Spider-Man, right? Peter Parker. So in this world, Anne says, yeah, I went to that church uh, after you had killed yourself because I was angry and sad and everything. And, um, and I was mad at Spider-Man, uh, you know, for, I guess, or whatever. Like she was talking about all the things she was mad at about um, how Eddie died. And that anger is what the suit sent. So I guess the suit was going to attach to Eddie, but since he died, it stayed in the church for a week or two until Anne got there, and then it bonded with Anne. So I'm assuming still the suit came from Peter. I'm going to assume that, because um, I don't know if the book tells you otherwise. But then she reveals, she's like, oh, well, I have these four soldiers that work for me, and we stand against Codex. Um, so here are the four soldiers, and they take their masks off, and it's uh, Deadpool is one of them. Uh, Andy Benton is another one. Uh, Cletus Cassidy is one, uh, like a reformed Cletus Cassidy, and Peter Parker with like a, a dad mustache. Um, but I'm like, well then, wait a minute. So she has the original suit. So, but didn't that come from Peter? And doesn't it hate Peter? Or 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 did the suit not come from Peter in that universe, and it just landed on Earth somehow? Like so again, like that doesn't make sense. Like if Peter drops the suit, it it stays in the church. Eddie dies, then the suit bonds on Anne, and then now Anne is like, oh, this suit has had offsprings, and one of them is on Peter Parker. It's kind of like, why, though? Like, doesn't it, don't the suits hate Peter Parker if they share Anne's hatred of Spider-Man or whatever? So, I don't know, whatever. But again, like, revealing their identities, it's felt like a fanboy thing and not really something that really affects the story fully. I would have just rather those characters not existed and Anne maybe be the sole resistance person against like granted that would have been a cosmic coincidence that Anne is the one uh but again that's a comic book coincidence that i would probably overlook if it just they let you know they wrote her well but all these big moments in that battle like that's where donnie where i rail against him when he writes female characters he either doesn't write female characters at all or when he does introduce them he doesn't really give them a ton to do he gives them the emotional moment but he doesn't give them like the badass moment um and so in this like it's like deadpool like uh like a venomized juggernaut and a venomized saber tooth and, and, and Wolverine all come into the sewers to fight them sent by Codex. And so they fight back and, uh, and, and pretty much Deadpool is the one who gets the big glory moment there where he blows himself up and kills the others. And you're just kind of like, all right, Anne got in a fight, but she didn't really have like too many, she didn't have like any big badass moments, but I felt like if it was just her and Eddie and Dylan, the three of them could have handled 
those characters. I mean, Dylan's like literally a demigod and it's just so weird to me. Like, so there must be something in this atmosphere that's preventing Dylan from using his powers. And I guess we know what that is because we know who Codex is now. So we'll talk about that. So the book ends with Eddie and Anne and them getting away. Um, but right before or right after that, you have uh, Scorpion who's been taken in, uh, oh, not Scorpion, I just revealed his identity. Uh, you have uh, Virus who has been taken in by the uh, Symbiote Avengers and brought to Codex and they take his armor off and, and you know, Codex says, I have no idea who this guy is. And he's like, uh, and so Matt Gargan's like, well, it doesn't matter, I'm from another universe and I know who, I'm here for Eddie and Dylan. And Codex is like, wait, Dylan? He's like, tell me more. And he goes, and then if you tell me what I wanna know, we'll enhance you and we'll give you the ability to go kill uh, Eddie if you want. So that's when you find out that Virus is actually Scorpion. He gives uh, Codex the information he wants and they bond him genetically with a symbiote and turn him into a green symbiote with a scorpion tail. And I just thought that was the lamest thing ever. So it's like, all right, so you revealed kind of, we never really see what Matt Gargan looks like without the armor on. You see that his face is messed up and there's a like damage to his body and stuff. Uh, based on, I guess, his last encounter with Eddie from the, the Nativity story. But it, it, I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting there going like, wait, you revealed it's Matt Gargan? And then you instantly give him a symbiote. Like, you, he's kind of undoing everything that Costa did that I thought was good. You know, like, Costa was trying to build Eddie uh, a non-symbiote rogues gallery of, of enemies. And uh, minus, like, Lee Price, who came back at that one point. But for the most part, he was trying to, like interject you know a supporting cast and other characters for him to fight and even taking some from spider-man which is fine spider-man has enough uh villains like bring mr negative over too like that's what i want i want eddie to have like a nice rogues gallery of characters or characters he interacts with a lot uh, on a consistent basis and i like that with alchemax and the other things but this is like it's like all right he has dylan and that's and that's pretty, it's just him and dylan for the most part which is fine i like how donnie kind of writes that relationship but in this one, Dylan totally takes a back seat, which is how you kind of can guess who Codex is. Because you're like, I, I could guess immediately. Because like I said, Donnie Cates' writing a lot of times is very predictable. Now, granted, I didn't really see that virus was Matt Gargan. I didn't really see that coming. I was thinking it was going to be like a jack-o'-lantern or something. Because in the first issue of Venom, uh, Venom, the first thing he does is he smashes jack-o'-lantern's head into the ground and messes up his face even more. So it's like, oh, maybe it's jack-o'-lantern coming back and uh, and just buying all this armor. Um, well, it turns out that's what he was doing. It was Matt Gargan. He bought all this armor on the black market and pieced together his own suit to fight Eddie and hopefully kill him. Um, so now he's a symbiote. And I'm like, well, that's so lame. Like, he's already been a symbiote before and he was arguably one of the worst villains next to Angelo Fortunato. So, uh, so to me, I'm like... Yeah, they didn't really do anything interesting with him except for um, what they did that Spider-Man miniseries that Chris Piccolo drew. Uh, and I can't remember, the Sinister Spider-Man, I think it was. That was pretty interesting. That was probably the most personality they gave Matt Gargan the entire time he was Venom. So to just make him a Scorpion symbiote, I was just like, how lame is that? Like, whatever. And so Codex then reveals, we find out that Anne, you know, Eddie says, oh, it's just me and Dylan, my son. And Anne goes, what do you mean Dylan? And he goes, Dylan. He goes, that's my son's name. And he goes, and so we're here. We just need to get back to our world. And Anne says, no, Dylan, that's Codex's name. And you're just like, well, there, first of all, there's a million Dylans. <laughs> Unless this Dylan Codex is, is Anne's son, um, who like turned bad, I guess. But I'm like not even interested. I, I don't care. Like, I, although I think the, the human moment we're going to get out of that, and I'm sure Donnie will, will do a good job at this, is that it's going to be, you're going to maybe find out Codex is maybe the son of Anne and Eddie. And that's something she wanted to tell Eddie before he killed himself was that she was pregnant. And then he killed himself, so she never, she never could. And so Dylan, for some reason, got influenced by Null or got influenced by the Grendel or something and has taken over the world. And that's this reality's version of it. And so now Anne from an alternate universe uh, can connect with Dylan and Eddie and then Dylan can learn who his mom was through an alternate universe version of her. And then maybe the three of them will come back into the main Marvel universe. Um, that could be the way to bring Anne Wang back is just an alternate universe version of her who knew and loved Eddie um, and was a mother to Dylan. And that could be what they do. Um, but the thing is, is she is wearing the same exact Venom symbiote that Eddie's wearing. So if that happens, that would essentially mean two actual Venoms uh, like identical ven venoms just from parallel worlds 
in the same universe. And I don't know, that could be an interesting story plot point too. So there's there's good in here in my opinion. I mean, I know a lot of you guys probably like this a lot more than I did, but I still found some good in here and I see potential for future stories that could be interesting to dive into. And one thing I'll give Donnie credit for as far as writing goes is when he writes those moments between Eddie and Dylan and Eddie and Anne, like I thought they were good moments and, and those make me want to stick with the book. But all the other fanboy nonsense is what makes me not want to stick with the book. So there's like, that's why I'm always like right down the middle on, on his writing. Um, but uh, Juan's art is good in this. There's a lot of great moments in it. I like how he does expressions with characters. I think he's really good at that. I think Iban Coelho, I like uh, his style a little bit more, but Juan's style is still very fitting for a Venom comic book, especially like a, a slapsticky, over the top, cross world adventure kind of story. Like it kind of works and it's fun. So, um, so I'm hoping, you know, he'll be sticking on, I think, for the next like issue or two as they wrap up uh, Venom Beyond. So let me know what you think because I know we're in like two months, we're coming up on King and Black. Uh, I go back and forth every day of whether I'm actually going to read that book when it comes out and review it, or if I'm just going to wait till the trade comes out and review it then. I'm thinking I might do that because we have enough Flash Thompson stories to talk about that I am behind on that we need to get to. So maybe I'll just do that and save all that. Plus around December, we're probably going to get Venom 2 movie news, uh, most likely, or at least a teaser or something. So I have a feeling I'll have plenty to talk about and I don't even need to worry about the Donny Kate stuff. And I'll just wait till that stuff comes out in trade and I can get it on sale like on Comixology for you know cheaper prices for the trades. Um, I'll just wait for that and then we'll review them then because we still got the Ravencroft stuff to go through. We got like the Wraith and Good Sun one shot to go through. So we still have stuff to cover that leads into King and Black and we'll try to get it all done before King and Black. So that way, that we're, the only thing we're skipping is King and Black. So that way we've covered everything else. So I'll get all that stuff up to you guys over the next like month or so. Um, but with these two issues, I really wanna hear what you guys think because like I said, there's good and bad in, in my opinion. I thought there were some good moments, good emotional moments, and then I just thought the fanboy stuff, like revealing who those other four symbiotes were, that it was like a reformed Cletus and, a, and you know, Peter Parker, who looks like a, a dad with a dad mustache, like a, a, a 50s cop mustache. Like all that stuff, I was just kind of like, eh, I mean, I don't know. Like th th those do nothing for me. Those moments do nothing for me. And that big buildup where they're like, Codex is Dylan. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, I've known that. Like I, I haven't actually known that. Uh, but that was my first guess. The second I saw Codex, I was like, it's got to be Dylan. Like, because I just, like I said, I, I can predict sometimes what Donnie's doing. And when you look at the design of Codex, he looks kind of like a Null. And clearly Null and Dylan are linked in some way. So I was kind of like, ah, it's just going to be Dylan. So I would have been surprised if it wasn't Dylan. Uh, that would have shocked me. But the fact that it is Dylan, I was just kind of like, ugh, whatever. Um, but the fact that Virus is Scorpion, I was like, oh, that's interesting. But now he's a stupid symbiote monster, and now I'm, I'm not interested. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't even want him to be Virus, actually. I, I was like, I know, I like him as Scorpion. The Nativity was a good storyline where he's trying to, like, destroy the suit before it reproduces. Like, I'm like, that's great. And he's trying to take the, this, the reproduced symbiote, you know, because he wanted a symbiote again. So it, it follows the the kind of the thing Mike Costa was setting up where Mac kind of missed being bonded to something. But at the same time, why would he? Like he was miserable the entire time that he was uh, Venom until he became the dark Spider-Man for Dark Avengers. Then he started to have fun in that sinister Spider-Man miniseries. But I don't know, it's just, to me, it just seems weird. Like I like Mac as Scorpion um, and I like Venom as, you know, Eddie Brock. Like it's like, I'm, I'm not against different things being done with them, but I hope that Scorpion turning into the Scorpion symbiote thing, I hope that's wiped out really quickly. And I hope they bring his like shattered body back to the main Marvel universe without that symbiote. That's what I want. I want Anne and Dylan and, uh, and Eddie to destroy Codex <laughs> and then free this world of symbiotes realize they have the power to do it, that they, you know, that gives Eddie maybe some more confidence in fighting, um, no, and then they beat up Scorpion, rip the symbiote off him. He, you know, have him all be, you know, mangled up or whatever from, you know, whatever he looks like underneath the costume. Show what that looks like, drag him back to the main Marvel universe and lock him up in jail. And then he can start over of like how he's going to get back at Eddie. Uh, and that way you can have a consistent villain and someone who's still part of Venom's rogue gallery. I hope all that stays, you know, for the most part. So I hope this Scorpion symbiote thing is destroyed in the next issue. <laughs> and then Mac just gets taken back to Earth. Uh, that would be good. 
So anyway, that is my long rant and ramble about these two issues. Uh, but, you know, still some good in them. I did like them. I did like the artwork. And so I'm curious. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not totally writing this book off um, as far as this story goes because I do like alternate universe storylines and all that stuff. But I got to be honest with you, I'm way more interested in the maker and what he's doing than I am with most of this other crap. Although the Anne thing, the Anne reveal, where she's like Agent Venom, that's kind of cool to me. And I hope she, with the symbiote or without, I hope she comes back to the main Marvel Universe uh, because that would be great to have that dynamic and to actually have Eddie have an actual family. Um, that would be great. And it would be really neat to hear the two symbiotes interact with each other. Uh, Eddie's Venom symbiote and Anne's Venom symbiote, they went through, they had very parallel, uh, you know, their lives parallel each other. It'd be very, uh, in some ways, uh, leading up to the moments they bonded with Anne and Eddie. But I would really like to hear or see what it's like for those two to communicate with each other. And maybe this symbiote could be like, wait, you erased Eddie's memories and altered them? I would never do that to Anne. That would be a great thing to do with those two symbiotes. Uh, and so Donnie, like if you're out there, do something cool like that. I think that would be awesome. So uh, you guys let me know what you think of these two issues down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.